been battling a bout of a stomach bug. And so I've been spending most of my day cleaning, doing laundry, and I think I'm mostly caught up. And so I wanna tell you a little bit about this book I'm reading. Actually, first I'm gonna preface it with this. I am super duper behind in reading in the month of October. There's a book that I'm currently reading for a separate reading vlog to round off that reading vlog. And I pff, am not so motivated to finish it. I know it's probably going to be good, but these first 100, 150 pages are really bringing me down. And so there's also a bunch of books that I've been excited to read for the month of October that I'm just gonna dive on in. And this is probably gonna be a standalone reading vlog, just a reading vlog about this, about this book I'm reading and the things I'm doing while I'm reading it. So the book is called Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. It doesn't have the sleeve. This is what the sleeve looks like. I'm one of those weirdos that takes the sleeve off, or maybe I'm not a weirdo. Maybe that's the normal thing. Uh, when, when I read a book though, I take the sleeve off. And basically what this book, I'll put this right here. Can you see that? There we go, there we go. It's about this woman named Maggie Holt, who, whose father just passed away. And what he was most famous for was writing a book uh, about their experience, her and her family's experience uh, growing up at, or living at Bainbury Hall for all of 20 days. Bainbury Hall is supposed to be extremely haunted according to her father's book and she has now inherited this place and she has long since believed that everything her father talked about in this house and in this book was a lie and so she why are there always flies in my video <clears throat> and so now that she has inherited this house from her father she is going to go and fix it up to try to sell it that's there's no spoilers in that that's literally what it says on the cover so i am about 78 pages in and it's very eerie very creepy already and I know it's gonna freak me out so my number one rule to myself is probably don't read this after dark Hannah don't read it after dark I know I think it's gonna be good I don't ever read scary books like this but I've been really intrigued to try this one because I really enjoyed lock every door by Riley Sager so I'm excited to see how it goes and I'll keep checking in until I finish it. because I am flying through this book and I can't put it down. I'm on page 214 and a huge discovery was just made. Actually, it was a couple chapters ago and Maggie is starting to kind of unravel what that discovery means. And it's just, it's, it's really good. Um, I don't know if I would recommend it to everybody quite yet. I think I'm gonna have to finish it to be able to say that what is, Going off my hair. Yeah, it's very scary, just like I thought it would be. I could not sleep the other night thinking about the creepy things that were going on in the book. So I'm making a rule for myself that I can only read it during the daytime. But I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I think I'm gonna finish this book before it gets dark. So I'll check in later. Okay, quick update on Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I haven't checked in for like over a hundred pages because I don't really know what to say. I'm really freaked out, uh, really scared. And I think the big climactic scene is about to happen scenes because I am on page 337 and I have only 50 more pages. But it's still light out, so I'm not going to stop reading. I'm just going to power through. Matt just took the kids to um, his brother's house so I can finish the book as I please. 
Also, he had the audacity to tell me that a curtain of ours moved by itself. I'm like, why are you telling me this when I'm reading a ghost story? Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. That's all I'm trying to say. Anyway, the twist for the armoire, I'm not going to say any spoilers, but the twist for the armoire just came up. And oh my gosh, that is, mm, mm, don't like, don't like that. Um, I mean, I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? It's just scary. I have no idea what's going to happen. None. None idea. So, check in soon. cover a little bit before I can give you my final thoughts on Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. And um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Just finished it. Oh my gosh. Just when you think he's done with the twists, he slaps you in the face with another one and then another. And then eventually you just decide, okay, I'm going to get over myself and just stop trying to think that it's all over. So, I humbled myself, Riley Sager. Thank you. Yeah, I am going to watch something happy now and eat some comfort food because that was a wild ride. And I need to recover a little bit. What's up, guys? And happy Reformation Day. Happy Halloween. Whatever you celebrate. And I'm here to give you my final thoughts on Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Sorry for that background noise. That was a huge truck going by and also somebody's mowing their lawn. So sorry about that. I absolutely loved Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed all the twists. And let me tell you, there were a lot of twists in this bad boy. And I'll talk about some spoilers at the end too. I'm just going to give like a general review and rating. I honestly think that I'm going to land at a 5 out of 5. 4.5 out of 5. 5 out of 5. I really enjoyed every single twist in this book. There were a couple unanswered questions and I'll talk about that in the spoiler section. But overall, this was so well crafted, so creative. I mean, obviously it's any ghost story or horror story like this, there are going to be a lot of common themes throughout any other ghost story. So I don't feel like they were necessarily copying all of, I mean, there's always going to be those weird sounds. There's always going to be, you know, those weird thoughts in your head and creepy children. I mean, all of it is going to come as it will. So, but yeah, I thought it was so well crafted in regards to the scare factor. I was definitely scared while I was reading it. Yeah, I think it was just that last night that I was finishing it off that I was like, oh my gosh, this is really creepy. But I haven't really thought a whole lot about it except for just about how clever the twists are. So I feel like if you are easily scared, this might not be a good book for you. There aren't really any um, super big triggers for me. There are really dark themes that, I mean, dark themes alone is a big trigger for me. So if you can't handle dark content, um, dark storylines, 
then this is probably not the book for you, but I really enjoyed it. There's not really heavy swearing or anything. I know a lot of people are bothered by that, that follow me, um, but there's really not heavy swearing. So overall, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if this one or Lock Every Door are my favorite. I like them both for different reasons. And there are such mixed reviews about his other books, but these two, this one and Lock Every Door, tend to have the best reviews and tend to be the most liked. And I definitely can see why. I'm scared to pick up the other ones because I feel like I started with his best two, you know? I also really enjoyed how the book was set up with every other chapter being a chapter from her dad's book. And then it was almost like a parallel of a very similar thing happening in real life while she's staying in the house. I really enjoyed that concept. I don't always like it when books hop from perspective to perspective, but in this case, it was really good and it really kept me reading, kept me on the edge of my seat. So loved that. If you have not read it yet, I am going to talk about spoilers in the next section. I'll keep a little spoilers warning over the whole section where I talk about spoilers. But other than that, yeah, I, oh my gosh, I really enjoyed this book and it was such fun a fun time to do a quick little reading vlog over it. I think I much prefer doing reading vlogs with like one book as opposed to three because it's so much more pressure <laughs> to get all those clips in, to get my thoughts in as I have them. So I'm going to start talking about some spoilers now. In regards to spoilers, what I loved about this book was that every little detail was a mystery to be solved. Like she's going back to her house that she and her family lived in for 20 days. She has no idea why they left, but she, in her mind, knows. She's like, that wasn't haunted. A couple twists that really stood out in my mind were, number one, I was expecting that Maggie may have, may have killed her, killed Petra. I couldn't figure out how yet, and I couldn't figure out why the book existed because of it. And so I thought that how Riley Sager drew that all together was really really well thought out really well done um i was also not expecting who the real killer was that really shocked me and also i loved how they tied in okay she was miss Pennyface. that made total sense the little girl ghost being totally fictional one thing i did not get and maybe somebody can explain it to me is why miss Dittmeyer, Dittmer, Dittmeyer, Petra's mom, Elsa, was Mr. Shadow. I'm like, I get it, like it explains somebody coming in and telling her she's gonna die, but why did she think she was gonna die? And why is an old lady sneaking into the house, sneaking into a five-year-old girl's room to tell her she's gonna die here? That just, that, did not make any sense to me and I finished it a couple of days ago and I've been thinking about it and thinking about it I still can't figure it out so maybe somebody can explain that to me I'll, I mean it, it ties it together but that felt to me like a last-ditch effort to make it come together I can't for the life of me figure out why an old lady unless it was related to her dementia would sneak into a little girl's room and tell her that she's gonna die here I can't figure that out but I did absolutely love the twist with the armoire. I thought that was really clever, really creepy. Like that was probably the creepiest twist of the whole book. The other thing that was never explained, and I think this one was on purpose, was the chandelier and why it kept turning on. Um, I've never, I've never known of there being any sort of electrical error that would cause something to keep turning back on at the same time or I don't know that one didn't make any sense to me and he never tied that loose end up and for me like how I interpreted it was that he meant to do that he meant to leave something obtuse and to make you think oh but was it haunted type of thing so that was the other thing that didn't make sense to me or not that didn't make sense but that was the other thing that wasn't tied up for me. Ooh, and it was so chilling when when her parents, like her dad describes in the letter, coming home to the body of Petra and their five-year-old is sitting at the top of the stairs saying, Miss Pennyface did it. 
that was the creepiest. The armoire and that scene are tied for the creepiest twists of the book because both of those really got me. Anyway, I loved it. I loved it. 4.5 out of 5 or 5 out of 5, I'm not sure yet. I think I put it 5 out of 5 on Goodreads. I just had that one problem with Mr. Shadow and maybe that's me being way overly dramatic about what I think it should be. And that's a wrap for this reading vlog. I'm hoping to do a couple really fun reading vlogs in November. One of them is I really hope to read The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. Another book I really hope to read in the month of November is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I hear so many, so many, so many good things about it. I thought about doing a vlog of books that take place in Alaska because I actually have three books that take place in Alaska on my TBR right now. I thought that would be kind of fun. Don't know if I can pull it off, but I will for sure hope. I will for sure hope to do reading vlogs on those. Let me know in the comments below books that I should be reading this winter. And yeah, I look forward to making more content. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and God willing, I will see you in the next one. Bye.